Hello everyone and welcome back to Math 20A Mathematical Logic. Lecture 11 Upward Levenheim's Column Theorem and Expansions by Definition. Last time we have introduced the diagram method, which allows us to uh, establish a correspondence between the elementary extensions of a given structure, up to endomorphism, and models of a certain theory associated to it, namely the complete diagram of the structure M. Today we begin by considering uh, an application of this result, which allows us to build uh, larger elementary extensions of a given structure, namely the so-called upward Levenheim's column theorem. We already saw the downwards Levenheim's column theorem, which allows us to find elementary substructures uh, of smaller size in particular. And now we're interested in finding elementary extensions of uh, arbitrary larger sizes of a given structure M. So towards this purpose, let M be an infinite L structure for some language L and let kappa be a cardinal such that kappa is greater or equal than the cardinality of M plus the cardinality of the language L. Then there exists an elementary extension of M which is of cardinality kappa. Proof. First, note that it is enough to construct an elementary extension N of M of cardinality greater or equal than kappa and then to apply the downwards Levenheim's column theorem to a subset A of M of cardinality kappa containing the base set of the structure M which would give us precisely uh, a structure uh, an elementary extension of uh, M of cardinality kappa we are using here the following observation that if we have M an elementary substructure of N and we also have that M is a substructure of N0 which in turn is an elementary substructure of N then also M is an elementary substructure of N0 this is immediate from the tarski watt test Indeed, uh, assume that phi of x0 a bar is a formula and a bar is a tuple of parameters from M such that N0 satisfies phi of b0 a bar for some element b0 in n0 but uh, of course n0 is in particular a subset of n and we also know that m 
is an elementary substructure of n, so there must exist some a0 in uh, m such that we have that n satisfies phi of a0 a bar but of course uh, all of the elements a0 and the elements of the tuple a bar are in particular in n0 and n0 is an elementary substructure of n hence we have that n0 satisfies phi of a0 a bar and a0 is in m so by tersky watt test, since phi was arbitrary, this implies that M is an elementary substructure of N0. Hence, we have reduced the problem to finding an elementary extension of M of cardinality at least kappa. So now, for any i in kappa, let ci be a new constant symbol. And we consider the language L tilde, which would take to be the language LM, together with the union of all these new constant symbols, CI, for I and kappa. And we consider the L tilde theory T tilde, which we take to be the complete diagram of M together with the sentences of the form the negation ci equals cj for all i less than j less than kappa so it's a theory uh, of cardinality kappa then we claim that t tilde is finitely satisfiable meaning that every finite subset of T tilde has a model. Indeed, if T tilde 0 is a finite subset of T tilde, we can interpret the finitely many constant symbols let's say ci1 through cin occurring in t tilde 0 by arbitrary distinct elements of M which is possible to do because uh, we're assuming that the structure M is infinite hence we get an expansion of M star the structure uh, consisting of M with all of its elements named by the constants uh, in the diagram, in the complete diagram language, which is a model of T tilde zero. Hence, by compactness, We get n tilde, a model of the whole theory t tilde, whose L reduct n is an elementary extension of m 
because uh, in particular n tilde is a model of the complete diagram of m and moreover we have that the cardinality uh, of n tilde is at least kappa since it contains the elements ci, the interpretations of the constant ci in n tilde for all i uh, in kappa and this con the interpretations of these constants have to be pairwise distinct because this is explicitly stated by the axioms contained in t tilde and n tilde is a model of t tilde so this gives us a model of size uh, at least kappa and hence by the early discussion we can find the model of size uh, an elementary extension of m of size exactly kappa combining the downwards levenheim's column theorem and the upwards levenheim's column theorem we have the following corollary let t be a theory admitting an infinite model Then T has a model of cardinality kappa for any kappa greater or equal than the cardinality of the language L. So this tells us that uh, for theories admitting infinite models, the, the theory absolutely cannot see the cardinality uh, of the model contrasted with the situation for finite structures so recall that if m is finite and n is elementarily equivalent to m then in fact n is isomorphic to m so in particular it has the same size Next topic we discuss is expansions by definition. When studying a class of structures in a given language, it might often be useful to enrich the language by symbols for definable relations, functions or constants. Uh, so here we will describe uh, how this may be done formally without uh, changing the expressibility of the language. We introduce some notation. We will write exists uh, with an exclamation sign x psi read as there exists a unique x such that psi as an abbreviation for the formula exists x psi and for all x prime psi with x prime substituting x implies x is equal to x prime with x prime a variable distinct from x now we have the following definition let t be an L theory and let L prime be some language containing L. Assume that there are the following for any enary relation symbol 
R in L prime, which is not in L, an L formula phi R of x1 through xn. Next, for any nary function symbol f in L prime but not in L we have an L formula phi f of x0 x1 through xn such that the theory T implies that for all x1 through xn there exists a unique x0 such that phi and finally for any constant symbol C in L prime but not in L an L formula phi C with a single free variable x0 such that T implies that there exists a unique x0 such that phi C under these assumptions we have that then the L prime theory T prime given by T together with the following axioms. So first an axiom for all x1 through xn phi r of x1 through xn is equivalent to r x1 through xn for any relation symbol r in L prime but not in L an axiom for all x1 through xn phi f of f of x1 through xn x1 through xn for any function symbol f in L prime but not in L and also an axiom phi c of c for any constant symbol c in L prime but not in L so a theory t prime given by T and all these axioms is called an expansion by definition of T. Recall that two formulas phi1 of x1 through xn and phi2 of x1 through xn are called equivalent in the theory T 
if we have that t implies for all x1 through xn phi1 is equivalent to phi2. And they are called logically equivalent if they are equivalent in the empty theory. We have the following lemma. Any formula is logically equivalent to a formula with all terms of height less or equal than 1. Proof for phi a formula let m of phi denote the maximal height of a term appearing in the formula phi. We prove the lemma by induction on the pair m of phi height of phi with lexicographic order. We consider the case when phi is an atomic formula of the form R T1 through Tn for some terms T1 through Tn this illustrates already the main idea and the other cases are uh, similar or, or even uh, trivial. To simplify the notation We assume that the height of each of the terms ti is greater than 1 for i ranging from 1 to m and that the height of the terms ti is less or equal than 1 for i greater than m. So we might have to reorder the terms uh, if necessary, but uh, this does not lose uh, any generality. For each i between 1 and m, let us write the term ti as fi of si1 through si k i since we assume that the height is greater than 1 it has to be of this term for some terms si1 through si k i then we choose new variables y i j for i ranging over 1 through m and j 
between 1 and ki. Now, if we write yi bar to be the tuple of the variables yi1 through yi ki, then we have that phi is logically equivalent to the formula psi given by the following expression. So we have exists y1 bar through y m bar such that r f1 of y1 bar through f m of y m bar followed by the terms t m plus 1 through t n and conjunction over all i j y i j is equal to s i j. Note that uh, the formula psi written this way satisfies that m of psi is strictly less than m of phi. The case uh, where the formula phi is given by t1 is equal to t2 for some two terms is similar. So this shows that we can always uh, reduce uh, the maximal height of a term in a formula by 1 uh, and repeating this we will reduce to the situation with all terms of height 1. Next we have the following definition. Let T be an L theory and assume that T prime uh, is a theory containing T in uh, language L prime for some L prime a language extending the language L. Then we say that T prime is a conservative expansion of T if for any L sentence psi we have T has psi as a logical consequence if and only if T prime has psi as a logical consequence. So even though T prime is an expansion in a possibly larger language, at the level of the L sentences it has exactly the same implications as T. And now we have the following proposition. Let T prime be an expansion by definition of T, then the expansion T prime of T is conservative. And furthermore, we have that any L prime formula psi prime is equivalent in T prime to an L formula psi. Proof any model 
m of t has an l prime expansion which is in fact unique to a model m prime of t prime indeed for a relation symbol r belonging to l prime but not to l we may define the interpretation of r in m prime to be the set of the realizations of the formula phi r given by the uh, definitional expansion uh, in the structure m and it also follows from Beth definability theorem covered in the homework that that's the only possible choice so we have to define the interpretation of R this way now for a new function symbol F we may define the interpretation of this function symbol on uh, a tuple a1 through an equals a0 if we have that m satisfies the formula phi f of a0 a1 through an and similarly for new constant symbols we pick them uh, to be the realizations of the corresponding formulas phi c given in the definitional expansion it then follows that t prime extending t is conservative as any model of t can be expanded to a model of t prime hence they have to have the same logical consequences now in order to show that any l prime formula is equivalent in the theory t prime to an L formula for simplicity we will just treat the case where the expanded language L prime consists of L together with a new function symbol for an nary function symbol F So we're just adding one single function symbol uh, the case of adding a relational symbol or a constant symbol are uh, very similar and uh, the case of uh, an arbitrary expansion can be treated inductively by adding one symbol at a time uh, of uh, one of these uh, three cases so we'll just discuss the case of an nary function symbol So let us first assume that psi prime is an atomic formula in the language L prime containing only terms of height less or equal than 1 
say our formula of say prime is of the form r t1 through tm for some terms t1 uh, through tm. Assume also that for i from 1 through k we have that the term ti is of the form f of s1i through sni for some terms uh, s1i through sni and also that f does not appear in any of the terms ti for i greater than k. This can always be achieved by uh, rearranging the order of the terms if needed. So then we have that the terms s i j all have height 0 since we're assuming that all terms in psi prime have height uh, at most 1 so in particular uh, ti has height one, at most 1 thus they are all L terms as we're assuming that f uh, is the only new symbol in L prime that is not in L already and uh, each SIJ has to be either a variable or a constant symbol hence already in L. Now we let Z1 through ZK be new variables then the L formula given by exists z1 through zk such that r z1 through zk t k plus 1 through tm and conjunction over i from 1 to k phi of zi S1i through Sni is equivalent in T prime to the formula Psi prime. That's because in a definitional expansion we know that the formula Phi F, uh, once we uh, fix uh, all of the uh, variables except for the first one we know that there exists a unique choice for the first variable so that the formula is satisfied and we know that it is uh, satisfied by um, applying f to the remaining variables 1 through n so then we get that z1 uh, through zk represent exactly the uh, results of applying f to the terms S1i through Sni because of this conjunction and then we express that R holds so it is easy to see that we obtain a formula equivalent to the formula Psi prime and uh, this is indeed an L formula because uh, R is a relational symbol so hence must be already an L because the only new symbol is the function symbol F and Phi F are of course also L formulas now, the other possibility is that psi prime equals t1 equals t2 for some terms t1 and t2, then the argument is similar and we uh, leave it out. So this uh, deals with the case uh, when psi prime is an atomic L prime formula, which only contains terms of height less or equal than 1. Now let psi prime be an arbitrary L prime formula
by the previous lemma up to logical equivalence we may assume that all terms occurring in Psi prime have height at most one. Now for any atomic subformula Psi prime of Psi prime by part one of the proof there exists an L formula chi equivalent to chi prime in T prime then we define an L formula psi obtained from psi prime by replacing every atomic subformula chi prime of psi prime by an equivalent atomic L formula chi it remains to remark that we have the following general claim replacing subformulas by equivalent ones produces an equivalent formula. We leave a proof of this claim as an exercise. Let's consider a couple of examples of expansions by definition. One, let T prime be the complete theory of the ordered field of real numbers. So it's a theory in the language L ordered rings. And we also let T be the theory of the field of real numbers. So the field of real numbers with the operation of addition, multiplication, and subtraction, and constant 0, 1. So this is the theory of the field of real numbers in the language uh, of rings, so a smaller language, but now we have that in R we have that R is less than S for two real numbers if and only if there exists A real number t different from zero such that t square is equal to s minus r it follows that t prime is an expansion 
by definition of t as this condition can be expressed by a formula and hence we can write a formula phi less than in two free variables x and y which is going to hold precisely uh, when x is less than y Example two. Let's see. The theory in the language of linear orders. So let this be the theory of total orders without endpoints. Note that this can be expressed by a sentence saying that for each element there exists an element greater than it and for every x there exists y less than it. And we also let t prime be the theory in the language of ordered rings. Which uh, is the theory of ordered fields. So the axioms for fields uh, and uh, axiom expression that the order is compatible with the field operations. Then we have that T prime is a non-conservative expansion of T indeed for example we have that T prime implies that for all X for all Y x less than y implies there exists z, x is less than z, and z is less than y. In other words, the order in any ordered field is dense. And the reason for this is that uh, given any pair of points uh, we can look at the interval that they define and then it has a midpoint which can be expressed as x plus y over 2. So any bounded interval has a midpoint which is expressible by the field's operations hence uh, the order has to be dense but uh, this density is not a logical consequence of T because of course we can have linear orders without endpoints which are not dense so for example uh, Z with the linear ordering satisfies T shows that uh, there's an L sentence uh, which is a consequence of T prime but not of T hence this is not a conservative expansion and uh, example 3 let T be the theory of the ordinal omega 1 together with the, uh, the linear ordering on it so this is an L ord theory then we have that the element omega is a definable constant in T, meaning that there exists a formula phi of x0 such that T implies exists a unique x0 such that phi and so that omega 1 with the order satisfies phi of omega which is of course an element of omega 1 so indeed the set of limit ordinals
is defined by the formula lim of x which says exists y, y is less than x and for any y there exists z such that y is less than x implies y is less than z and z is less than x so this is exactly the definition of limit ordinals then we can take phi of x to be the formula phi of x0 to be the formula lim of x0 so x0 is a limit ordinal and for all y if y is a limit ordinal then y is not smaller than x0 so this expresses that uh, x0 is the first limit ordinal which is exactly uh, omega